Hey everybody, welcome back. We're going to get into the disassembly of the Z1R engine. This is basically just a stock KZ1000 engine with a couple of changes, I think, to either the top end and certainly the carburation, but to be honest with you, I'm not 100% sure. But as far as, <clears throat> excuse me, the meat and potatoes go, uh, the KZ1000 service manual suits us just fine. Uh, on that note, actually, I found a um, really nice reproduction, original, you know, reproduction copy of a um, KZ1000, 76 to 80, I think, um, that co covers the uh, Z9, Z1, rather, Z1 to 900 all the way up to 1980 KZ1000 um, on eBay from New Zealand. So I'm actually going to have a hard copy of it, but it's not too terribly necessary for this operation or these series of operations, because I do have the pages printed out in the service manual um, for this. So as you can see, I already have the um, shifter cover taken off. That was kind of a bitch. Uh, you know, mainly because of the knock pins. The knock pins freeze up in it. And uh, when I do these things, I, I think I mentioned before, I bag everything up. And what I'm doing in this particular build, you can see there's a couple, or I should say build, in this disassembly. Um, I'm, um, I'm buying these plastic tubs, and I already have the top end stuff uh, organized. Uh, because this is going to get sent out to an engine builder, as far as I know. And even if it doesn't, even though I'm, if I'm going to do an, just our stock in-house clean everything up and send it out to a machine shop and you know the customer can probably send the cases out for paint and stuff um, I'm gonna need to have everything organized for me so I, I don't like to be disorganized for other people and certainly not for myself so I kind of have a shop made um, holder for this that holds the uh, rotor this is the dynamo rotor so I'm gonna, it's a 14 millimeter and no indication in the service manual that it's a left hand thread I'm pretty sure it's a regular right hand thread let me move some of this out of the way and double check yeah there's no oh gotta pick up the hair hose there's no um indication as it is i haven't really seen one like that so you double check it's on reverse see what we got now i have this cam chain free you know it's going to get replaced anyway but i don't want to jam it up and damn damage the um uh the crankshaft either so we've got to make sure we hold this in place good Oh, that was easy. Sometimes these are a real nightmare to get off. Nice looking bolt. Kind of gives you a boner, doesn't it? Not. Okay, oh. Actually, we'll leave that there. I'm not certain I have a puller for this yet. Uh, I'm going to look in my stash here and we'll figure it out. I may have to order one, but um, if that's the case, then we'll just resume the video at that time. Or we'll just resume it when, if I can find a puller. I, I got a ton of these different pullers, but I'm not sure about this one, so hang on. I have a couple of them. Well, two of them here. Um, one's modified down to be more blunt or flat at the end. That's the one I'm going to use. I'm afraid that this one is going to try to walk inside the uh, crankshaft opening for the bolt hole in there um, because it's uh, there's not a whole lot in there. I know that this one being flat is going to just hit the outside edge of the crankshaft. These can be real tricky because if they're on super super duper tight um, then um, we don't want to do any damage to the crank but you know we got to get the damn thing off so I try to use the best one for that purpose by looking into the hole seeing what it shows this one we go on forward. I think we'll turn the power down on it a little bit. See what we can get. Say your prayers. Oh, there it goes. Not bad. This being your starter gear, uh, there is a needle bearing and what they're calling a thick thrust washer behind here. There's your needle deck bearing. And then your uh, Thrust-O-Matic 5000. Um, so yeah, we'll, we'll set these aside because they have to be bagged up and put into the appropriate box. All right, cool. Now, I'm not going to be able to film this entire thing because it would just take too damn long. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, move on to the next operation, which I believe uh, I have to go to the other side and start the clutch side. So I'm going to spin this thing around after I clean up a little bit. But um, we'll, uh, when I come back on camera, I think I already have at least a cover off and then we'll start disassembling the clutch real quick but um like i said unfortunately i just can't film the whole thing it would be real difficult to do 
time wise and so forth and uh, this looks fine beauty so we're good all right be right back show you this here uh, there is a little bit of um, gnarliness to the taper on the end of the crank here this is a dynamo side and I'll tell you why it, it's only a taper fit that goes into the um, pub there you know the uh, dynamo and you know if that slips at all from whatever reason that's what happens uh, so really what you got to do is you got to make sure that when you put these back together when they're just tapers like for starter clutches and things like that uh, you degrease the snot out of them with brake clean make sure they're you know I can dress this up or somebody can dress it up with some 1500 paper and it'll be fine it'll be fine and then you uh, put these in usually with some sort of a Loctite and torque them up properly but they got to be super clean because it's a dry fit it's a dry taper fit well, we got our first major uh-oh here. I um, went to get the starter out and one of the long starter bolts broke. I just didn't realize it was so corroded in. And the problem with that is, you can see here from the length of the bolts that, uh, you know, there's about a half an inch of it still sticking up, which acts as a restraining pin. And this needs to go that way. It needs to go out to slide out of here. There's, there's nothing else I can separate um, to get that out. I, even splitting the case won't help me with that because this is in the upper part of the case. So what I'm going to do is, I got no choice. I do have a little bit of movement up and down, but really not much. And that's the problem. I can rotate it a little bit this way, you know. I should say, you know, right and left rotation this way. So it moves a little bit. What I'm going to end up having to do is, uh, I'm going to make a, a sleeve, a steel sleeve on the lathe that fits down inside that hole, whatever that hole is. And then um, I'll probably make it a little bit snug so I can tap it in. And then I'll just use a drill bit that's you know a little bit smaller than the sleeve, but about the same size as the bolt that's broken. And we'll use this as a guide to go in there and essentially like plunge mill with a drill bit that broken stud down and just keep trying it to move this thing uh, to, as soon as we can get the thing to pop out even if there's a teeny bit sticking up we should be able to weld a nut to that and then get it out you know considering it's aluminum it's a prime candidate for that the block that is so ooh, that's bad i've never experienced that one before and uh this is going to be a tough one and I, I can't take the starter apart the, taking the starter apart doesn't help me at all so you know, I can't separate anything this way. That's the problem. If I could separate it this way, I would just cut the bolts to the starter, the long bolts, and uh, you know, cut them in a couple of sections, and then just see if we can pull the cover off and take it apart in pieces. But I just don't see a way that it'll work. Yeah, I just, I just don't. So I guess we're gonna have to try this. We'll go ahead and um, chop this uh, little piece off. The dimension we need to make is uh, 275 thousandths. So, um, you know, about a 30 second over a quarter inch. Yeah, good enough. I might have to switch over to some carbide for this. I did dress up that high-speed steel tool, but it's a pin, so it's probably a little hardened or harder. I switched material. The other piece wasn't long enough. I just hate it when it's not long enough. You know, for me to work with it and then be able to cut off a piece, you know, otherwise I couldn't turn it continuously. No sense in doing it that way. I'm gonna put a center in it. Just a little dad here I'm gonna drill it for a number two I believe drill and that's because it's the closest to the biggest left hand drill bit that I have I want to use a left hand drill bit on this and uh, since I can't turn a lathe in reverse this one doesn't work that way I can't actually use that um, you know that particular bit for for drilling this hole so it's pretty close so we'll be able to get it through when the time comes but it is what it is now the 
the overall depth of the, that hole is actually inch and five eighths. So I'm just going to really go in about, uh, or I should say, make it about. Um, I don't know, about yay long would be good, I think. So that's about about an inch. Yeah, there we go. We're going to make it about an inch long. Doesn't really need to be any longer than that because it's just going to keep the drill straight, straight enough so I can go down and not necessarily screw up the sides of the starter. I mean, if I have to scrap the starter, I'm not going to, you know, be crying anything over it. But, you know, the bottom line is I, I'm going to try not to. Okay, we got a little mark there. Put a mark on the drill bit. I'm gonna go a little bit deeper than that. Deeper. And then uh, we'll turn it down. This piece is also a little closer to that uh, 2.7, two, I'm sorry, 275 thousandths that um, is the outer, you know, the ID, I should say, of the actual hole where I'm going to stick this. Stick it! So, it's a little bit better. Will it work? I don't know. This is a new one on me. I haven't run into this before. As you can see, the hole's all drilled. And, whoops, and, uh, yeah, where am I? I'm about 305. I just did a test cut. Let's go ahead and go. Uh huh. Uh huh. 295. That was about 10. I got a bunch of stuff on order for this lathe. It just hasn't gotten here yet. I got a new tool post coming. I've got a bunch of stuff coming. And it just, like I said, it's just not here yet. It, you know, it takes forever to ship crap now. Just going down the top. But we're not sending it to the moon, so all we needed to do is do its job. Yeah, a little over 90. What did I say? 75. <laughs> 85, yeah. So that was about right. Yeah, so let's, you know what? I'm just going to go right up to size because, it, you know, or close to it, and then we'll hit it with a file. Doesn't have to be perfect. I mean, like I said, it ain't going to the moon. So let's see. It's at 85 now. I want it at 75. We need to take 10 more. Maybe less than 10. Let's take uh, four because I'm going to bring it down with a file. Yeah, a little over 75. Perfect. All right, that's good. Um, the only thing is, I'm going to go ahead and cut a little bit more and leave it uh, just a little bit big because I want a shoulder there. Or actually, I don't even need to do any cut, and I'll just cut it off a little bit further up. I just want to leave a shoulder so it doesn't fall down in. And uh, I think there's enough of a hole there because I did it pretty deep. We'll just do a little tiny shoulder there, and then uh, I'll come back when that's all done. You don't need to see that crap. Could be the uh, left-handed drill bit. I don't know what size it is. So that fits really nice with just a little bit of play. That's fine. I don't care about chamfers or anything at this point. Chamfers. That'll go in there. Okay, this will go here. It'll keep it straight. I'm going to put the other bolt back in here to keep this thing from moving. Um, the threads are kind of messed up here, so I'm going to chase them first with an M6 by 1.0 tap. And then we'll give this a shot uh, because, um, you know, I, I don't know how good this grind is on this uh, left-handed drill, but I used the drill doctor on it, but um, it's a little bit weird to do on left-handed. But anyway, I, I will, we'll find out here in a minute. Worst case scenario, I'll just take the other bit and we'll just do it clockwise. It's not going to go any further. I'm sure it's froze up. All right, let the shit show begin. Got some Earl down in her. Put the drill up on her straight, hopefully. Tight, hopefully. Oh yeah, 
All right, backwards now. I'm gonna try to keep you in here as much as possible. Well, it's working. Working like a gherkin. I just, uh, I'm gonna really, you know, I just gotta get it down enough to get that starter out, even if I gotta kind of force it over without damaging the aluminum, because I gotta leave enough to weld a nut to. I'm sick of this. Not yet. Because that really looks... Let's get you over here. Oops. And that really looks like it's close. <laughs> Look at that. And we are just at the surface. I wish we had more, but unfortunately we don't. Aha! So there's the offending. Not that one, that one there. Now, what I think we shouldn't have too much trouble doing is cleaning the snot out of this with some brake clean, putting a nut on it, and then hitting it with the welder. All right, we're gonna try her here. It's the best I can do to get you in here, sorry. I gotta get in here more than you do. Got you in a little better, so the failure can be completely visible to you. This is probably not gonna work, nope. Absolutely not. That is just freaking in there. Let the failure commence. Hmm. Might be getting somewhere, fellas. Ah, it's coming off. It's breaking. Yep. 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 We didn't get jack shit on this, so... All right, well, I'm going to have to leave it to the machine shop then because uh, I just can't seem to get this one. This one's a toughie. Oh, no, Tom, don't, don't give up. Try it once more. Okay, I'll give one more shot. Yeah, it's breaking. I can feel it. Well, okay, we're done. Well, here we are, folks, um, on this wonderful road known as Interstate 4. I'm coming back from the uh, machine shop. Um, as you can see from the video, um, I was not successful getting that um, bolt out. So it's um, off to the machine shop, not just for that, but because we had another one give me a problem too. I didn't even bother videoing it or even taking a picture, but uh, one of the uh, main crankcase bolts would be on the bottom uh, in the number eight position because it gives the torque sequence uh, essentially stamped into the uh, bottom of the crankcase. And when you, um, you know, when you disassemble it, I like to do is follow that opposite. So I started eight and move my way down. So I started at that one and I could feel that one being super tight, like starting to twist, they're pretty long bolts. I did everything I could and every trick in the book to get that out and it snapped. And so it's a little bit proud of the actual split of the bottom, you know, the, where the top and the crank, the bottom crankcase meet. And he doesn't think there's gonna be any problem with it, but I need somebody that can fixture it up like in a small milling machine if necessary and uh, get that um, get the drilled through and perhaps um, you know with a time cert or some other thread insert in there if necessary so that's where we're at so um, uh, let's go ahead and continue on and we'll close out the video all right this obviously is the top half of the crankcase for the z1r 
Um, this position over here, this M8 by 1.25 millimeter thread pitch, um, that bolt snapped off. That's the eighth one in the torque sequence. The way they do these, uh, uh, these things on Kawasaki's, I'm not sure about Suzuki's, but Honda's and so forth, they actually stamp the torque sequence number of these important um, fasteners on the casting. So it's uh, the, number eight would be the last one because although you see more than eight holes here, this is actually for the, uh, for the, uh, the, the block that it's like a thrust block that actually bolts the um, crankshaft down in the middle. That's, that's exclusive of these eight here. So two, four, six, eight over here. All right, so basically what we have is, um, you know, we take out these first in a certain order. This is number eight, so I started there. I always reverse the torquing order when I take it apart. And I this one was seized up. They're actually pretty long bolts. I'll show you here in a sec. And it ended up snapping off no matter what I did. It was an, it was nothing I did like the <laughs> like the other part, which I'll show you here in a second. But um, it broke off nonetheless. So Don got that out, but um, he said we didn't have to use a thread insert, and he saved the threads. But you know, with getting that out, you know, you, you're you're punishing the threads a little bit. You're doing a little bit of damage, you know, from when it comes back out because it's so bound up. I wouldn't say galling, but it certainly takes a little bit of the, uh, perhaps the major diameter of the uh, internal threads. So this is what I ended up doing. I went ahead and made a bolt for it that will be used only in that location. And the reason why I did that was um, because I know if I redo the threads, I can actually make them a little bit big, a little bit large by simply leaving the um, major diameter of the stock itself um, slightly large. I calculated two or three thousandths would do it, and I think I did like four or something like that, just to make sure. I did this with a die. I did not single point this. I'm still trying to figure out how I can single point metric with the um, Imperial Atlas lathe. I understand there is a way to do it, but I'm still working on that. But I did this with a die, and uh, you have a hole in the end because I used a center, so that's not going to cause any problems. It is the exact same length as a, um, a stock bolt. These two are the same length that go in, on the other side of the case. That would be the bottom that go through this way. And these are the two long ones. The other ones are all shorter. So on this end is the two long ones. I did not like the way the other bolts fit in this hole. It, they, it seemed to be a little too sloppy for my liking. Um, and I know how far the thing goes down when it's it's clamped together because I measured all that. So it's down about that far when it's when it's torqued up. And so right now we've got like barely any play to it. And before with the with a regular one, it's it's warbling a little bit more. Again, nothing wrong with the threads. It's just one of these um, circumstances that happens when you have seized up bolts. Although the solution usually is not something as uh, you know lengthy and intricate as actually making a fastener, um, because the thread and the thread uh, engagement may not be that critical. But I felt it was in this. This is the old one that broke, and you can see the difference. That's how much it left behind. Yeah, I have a slight difference in the actual um, head of the of the bolt, but it's pretty much the same. I just mic'd everything up on a good bolt and did the appropriate length of this major diameter. This gets turned down to a certain length, which is uh, smaller. And then, um, you know, I actually did the threading. And, and of course, this is basically essentially a, a big, long relief cut for the threads. So yeah, that's gonna be uh, put into the lot for, um, uh, for whoever's gonna put the engine back together with a note on it. And if they choose to use it, they can. They can buy a brand new one and try that. That's fine too. Let me show you the other thing now. Sorry for the dirt and the and the dust and the chips. I haven't recleaned this since um, when I first degreased it before it went to Don. But uh, this is what happened. This is your uh, un, unmolested, and this is the one that's been repaired. I broke this when I cracked it in the back corner, so to speak. And so uh, this all fixed now. He did a nice job welding it up. Um, he did some um, you know die grinder work with it, but I went ahead and did a little bit more this morning and got this uh, pretty nice. It looks almost identical to the other one. Got the right chamfer in there. 
and uh, the threads are the same M6 1.0. He did that part, he did the thread. So the starter bolts in no problem. And you know, this, um, you know, this is obviously a repair and not original. And if, if the customer was gonna show this even in a concourse um, setting for a concourse restoration, this wouldn't make any, any difference whatsoever because it's not visible from the outside. If you do some sort of repair like this on, on a motorcycle you're gonna like do a concourse restoration on, uh, and the only thing that a repair that's hidden can affect for any points is if when something bolts up, it doesn't bolt upright or it's crooked or, or there's a fitment issue as a result of that. Otherwise, this is not gonna cause any problem. And besides, I know the customer's plan, the customer is actually going to be uh, doing this in a period modification level, not, not concourse original. In other words, what somebody would typically do on this bike back then and then he, uh, like for example, the pods and the Kirker 4 and one and so forth, not an original concourse restoration. So this will definitely suit, um, obviously on my dime, <laughs> my dime for, cert for certain on this. Don did a great job and I really appreciate him. And so I just wanted to, you know, I I'm gonna tell you if I make a mistake, I'm not gonna try to hide it or anything, and, but I'm gonna get it fixed and I'm gonna take care of it. So I just wanted to kind of show you where we are at on this. All right, everybody, thanks for watching, and then consider yourselves updated on the Z1R project at this stage of the game. Um, right now, we're in a holding pattern, getting with the customer who's been um, out of the area and determine where we're going to go next with this. But at least we're kind of back, we are back, at the level we are at is if nothing happened at all. So I just tore the engine down as the customer wanted, and everything came out, you know, hunky-dory, and all the parts are organized and so forth, which they are. But the, the hitch here, of course, was the two broken fasteners. So that's done, all cleared up. And speaking of cleared up, we're gonna clear this video up, get it in the can, get it on the channel. So I appreciate you watching. Any comments, concerns, or anything, please, or advice for that matter, please uh, don't hesitate to reach out. Hope you enjoyed. I enjoyed doing it. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you on the next video. And again, a, a big shout out to Don at Precision Cycle in Orlando, Precision Cycle and Metal Fabrication. He does cylinder boring, does work, doesn't really work on cylinder heads. Does cylinder boring, he'll do crankshaft, some crankshaft work. He's got a pretty extensive machine shop. I actually ran these cases up to him on this past Monday, today's Friday. They were done Tuesday, this repair, and I picked them up this following Thursday, which was yesterday. So a uh, real nice guy. Uh, 617 Silverton Street. I don't recall the phone number, but you can find them online. Precision Cycle Metal Fabrication in Orlando, Florida. Thanks again, Don. Aerial Square 4 cylinder block waiting to be done for these pistons, which are Italian, made in Italy. And uh, he said that, Machina said that um, there's like a one and a half thou clearance on the front. Or I'm sorry, here's the front. One and a half on the front and two and a half on the back, which makes sense because, of course, the heat goes to the back. But pretty neat. Aerial Square 4. Nice old Brit bike.